I never really considered that until your book. Until I heard the title of your book and I read the synopsis of it, I, I never really considered it. I never considered that thinking about your problems all the time and talking about your problems all the time li literally make the problems grow. That's right. I mean, it's the number one symptom of depression is what they call rumination, this pathological mm. obsessing over your pain. Yeah. That's why stuff like exercise, that's one of the reasons, aside from chemical reasons, one of the reasons that doing anything, you know that running errands is good for your mental health, getting out of your house and accomplishing anything yeah. is good for you. But sitting around talking and thinking about your problems, that's a bad habit. And the best cognitive behavioral therapists and others, you know, the, the dialectical behavioral therapists, the ones who do really well with depression, the first thing they do is try to break that on that that bad pattern. But a lot of therapists just indulge it. Why does this still keep happening to me? I don't know whose prayer I'm breaking into, but I'm breaking into somebody's prayer saying, Lord, why do I keep going through the same things over and over again? And the Lord sent me here to tell you the problem is with your default. Until you change your default, you will always go back to being who you were before because you have never changed your mind. You change your friends, you change your address, you change your phone number, you change the songs you sing, you change everything else, but you didn't change your mind. There is nothing as powerful as a change of mind. Boom! Nothing is powerful as a change of mind. Boom! Better get yours, cause I'ma take mine. Boom! Leave them where they got a thing ready. Used to have a lot of homies, now they dropping like a belly. I'm like, boom! Take it over, it's our time now, boom! Oh, you ain't know, we about to thrive now, big, overwhelming, optimistic, holding in them eight place, hey, back, place, and we're you don't know what it is. become your thoughts, thoughts become your actions, Whoa. so be intentional about a way your passion Whoa. is focused, there's no hocus, hocus, hocus. we only live once, man, and you know this, you can't press the rewind, but you can make a beeline to the next level like you're headed for the tree line. I was born in Minnesota, moved to Oklahoma, incorporated both into my rhymes, now it's time to show you how a former stuff dude it can't turn out the rap. With the lyrical miracle flow in the cash to match Yeah, I'm important, a Minnesota refugee But I'm consistent as can be As I rap on hip-hop beats Bringing rappers and hacks Even though that I'm wise I can play that folk and music But I ain't vanilla ice Here we go, here we go, here we go Full speed, three, two, one Dynamite on the scene Boom! Nothing is powerful as a change mind Boom! Better get yours cause I'ma take mine Boom! Leaving where they got a thing ready Used to have a lot of homies Now they dropping like a belly I'm like boom! We taking over, it's our time now Boom! Oh, you ain't know, we about to thrive now Big, overwhelming, optimistic, no little boom! And the Lord should be here to tell you The problem is with your default Until you change your default You will always go back to being who you were before Because you have never changed Your mind You change your friends You change your address You change your phone number You change the songs you sing You change everything else But you didn't change your mind, there is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. I mean, I remember some bills of $4,500 a month just to get leads that I was having to pay for. And mm -hmm. that's only get a lead and a contact to where now I'm paying you $1,700 a month. And I got 80 some leads last week alone. And I paid you $1,700. And to me, that was, that was huge for my industry. Um, that was one huge thing that just blown me away. Okay, folks, uh, money is a magnifier. That's what it is. Money is a magnifier. It's an amplifier. It just makes you more of who you already were. So as an example, if you're a complete jerk and you make a lot of money, uh, you'll become a bigger jerk. And on today's show, we're interviewing a, a longtime client who's a really nice, kind, decent person. Uh, he doesn't claim to be perfect, nor do I th think that he's perfect, but he's a guy that I use over and over and over. I utilize his services to plant trees and do landscaping for my family, for my business, because I really enjoy him as a person. I consider him to be a friend, and it's been awesome helping him magnify and grow his business. And without any further ado, we have the founder of Outside Inc., Paul Sullins. Welcome on to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? Doing good, Clay. Thank you for having me. So, Paul, I got to ask you here, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm looking at your tracking sheet, which for anybody out there who's a client, um, we look at the tracking sheet. 
Um, and last week you had 89 leads. So 89 people um, reached out to you to, uh, to to inquire about hiring you to do uh, landscaping, pool maintenance, uh, backyard wor work for them outside, uh, remodeling kind of work. And then I'm looking at your tracking sheet like a year ago, and, you know, you were getting like four or five leads on a weekly basis. Can you maybe walk the listeners through what it feels like to be on the receiving end of, end of 89 inbound leads in one week? It's a little scary, to be straight honest with you. <laughs> um, it, it's awesome just to know that the, the amount of work uh, up front that we put in uh, is actually paying off. Uh, you know, you, you see these you see these people, you hear all these things and you're like, Hey, it's going to be there. It's going to be there. And it's, it's been, it's been kind of mind blowing to sit there. And, you know, one of my office ladies comes in and goes, we've got 56 calls in one day right after a rainstorm. And to actually realize the work and the effort that we put in is actually coming to fruition. It's been amazing. Well, what Honestly, I'm going to do so. is I'm going to pull up your website and uh, I'm going to okay. showcase what you do so people can get a little context to know you're not a hologram. Um, outside Inc. Irrigation, um, Outside Inc. Irrigation is one of the websites. Also, folks, if you do a search on Google for Outside Inc. and the word Tulsa, um, you can find the website outsideinc.co. So two different websites there. And when you go to outsideinc.co, uh, we look here, we look at the service you, you provide. It's French drainage, it's landscaping. Um, you do monthly home maintenance. If you look at the irrigation services, uh, you guys are doing irrigation system repair and installation. So you're not the only guy in your market who's providing uh, irrigation systems or French drains or, um, but you're consistently getting a lot of leads. So I want to focus on the four aspects of business growth. There's a lot of them we could focus on, but I want to focus on four today. The first is marketing. You've got to get reviews from happy customers. You, I, I, every single week I harass you about this and every week you, you show up with more, but these are actual customers that have actually done business with you can you talk about the importance and i'll hit play but i'll hit mute as i'm playing these can you talk about the importance of gathering objective video reviews from real customers each and every week what kind of value has that made um when you're even talking to prospective clients it, it's made a lot of difference i mean we a lot of the phone calls you know we'll sit there and go hey we're the highest rated most reviewed company in Tulsa we do all these things and they're like yeah we know we went to your website and you know we we saw the clients speak about what you had doing what what you had done around the their houses and how well you communicated with them and that's how we decided to work with you guys so it, it's just you know I've put on I've put on so many different client reviews and interviews on the on the web page and it's it's been completely different you know um through some of your training and seeing some of your different videos from business, from the business uh, shows that you uh, put on clay. Um, I've noticed that we don't have to have the best looking and the most entertained TV produced um, videos. It's just getting videos of real people in their backyards, in their yards and actually talking about you as a person, and the products that we've done for them and how they've enjoyed it. How often when you meet somebody, and again, we're focused just on marketing right now, when you meet with somebody, how often does the potential buyer reference the fact that you, they've watched a video review or have looked at examples of video reviews on your website as a percentage? Like how often do they reference? Yeah, I've seen some of the videos or I've seen some testimonials. Uh, percentage wise, I would say at least 25 to maybe 50%. Um, yeah. You know, I have a couple of different sales guys. And I have some ladies answering the phones here. And I mean, I'm hearing it all the time. I've got an office right next to the lady answering the phone. And, you know, she goes, hey, how did you hear about us? Well, we, you know, we Googled you. And then it's like, oh, hey, you know this, this, this. And they were like, oh, yeah, we saw it. We already looked at your website and saw the saw all the views, all the video reviews you've done. So, I mean, it, it is, it's all the time. It might be more than that. But I, I would say in the neighborhood of 25 to 40 percent. 
And again, if you're talking about marketing, folks, we're talking about marketing. It's V-I-S-M. There's other details, but everyone needs to remember this. V-I-S-M. Video reviews, images, search engine content, more reviews. Let's hop on to I, uh, images. You're constantly gathering images of your projects. So, so it's not a an event. I think a lot of people think planning a garden is an event, and it's not an event. I think people think that getting married is an event. It's not an event. I think people think that um, you know raising a child is an event. It's not an event. It's a process. Um, every week you're gathering images before and after images of projects you've done. How has that paid off? Just the consistency of adding before and after images of projects. It's been a, it, it's, it's actually done it quite well. Um, it gets my guys, number one, it helps my staff and us know that number one, um, you know, cause as the owner of the business, you can't be on every job, you know, as you grow, as you, it helps me know that the guys are doing what I'm wanting them to do in the field. It's, my company is actually being um, portrayed the way I want it to be portrayed. But then also um, people always look at a company and look at, you know, we pull up in a nice fancy track and they're like, Oh, these guys, all they're going to do is the big fancy jobs. And not all our jobs are big and fancy. I mean, we, we talk and we work for the average Joe, the average person in the background. So when they're able to look on, you know, and see some of these photos of it's just a little small French drain, or we poured a little 10 by 10 concrete patio, it, it actually helps us uh, relate better to the clients and the customers in the field. I feel and just having all those videos and pictures. just to be super clear again, video reviews, got to get them every week. Images of projects. You do a great job with that. Uh, search engine content. Our team handles the uh, optimization, the ongoing updates on the website. So you don't have to mess with that. Um, how much does that help knowing you or for you knowing that you don't have to go in to your website and figure out how to code and update a website every week? There's no way I'd be where I'm at if I had a sticker mess with that. Um, you know, running a company, a lot of people always say starting your business is an easy thing. It's managing it and um, keep it on top of it. And these little de details like this, I mean, we're in the age now, word of mouth is one way, but most all everybody's going to Google and going to your websites to see what you're see how to, you know, how to get hold of you. And that's how that's the marketing we are in today, society. And I think that is super important uh, to have that up and running. And when I don't have to mess with it, it is blown me away. Cause I mean, I've got to deal with my employees. I got to deal with all this other stuff. And so it's just a huge peace of mind to know that that's just taken care of. I don't have to mess with it at all. Now. So again, we go back to this V I S M. And I think one way we learn is through repetition, video reviews, images, search engine content, the, op the ongoing optimization of the website. We handle that for all of our clients. And then M more reviews. Uh, I, I, we're never done getting reviews. And so right now, if somebody goes to Google and they do a search right now and they type in Tulsa tree planting, which is how I originally heard about you was I was looking to plant trees at one of my properties. I went I went to a church called Church on the Move, a really wonderful church uh, that at the time was led by Pastor Willie George. And the church that the trees looked incredible on the property. And so I kept asking people, who does the trees? Who's doing the work? And I kept hearing your name. Um, and that's how I first met you. And uh, now today, when they, someone types in Tulsa tree planting, you come up top in the search results, 703 reviews. You're constantly getting video reviews, images, search engine content, more reviews. Um, let's talk about that for a second. How much has it helped you to have the most Google reviews, in addition to video, but the most Google reviews? It gives you validity. Um, I really think with people, um, you know, I, I kind of tell this to people all the time, is like, how... I talk to my buddies of mine that own businesses and or in the in any kind of a service industry. And I'm like, what do people do now nowadays? They go to Google, they Google. They're Googling for French drains. They're Googling for this. They're Googling where to go eat. And if you, you know, to be at the top of Google gives you the opportunity to actually talk to a client and um, do, to bid it. Now, you know, we still have to go out and sell the job to the client. But um it's been very important and very um, helpful to be able to be at the top, to be able to get that. I don't know if I quite answered your question. No, this is great. And you've got the, the four aspects of business I want to focus on today. Again, step one, marketing and branding. We covered that. The web branding is just anything people see the website, the print pieces, the logo, the auto wraps. We handle all that with you. We do a lot of that work behind the scenes. That's mm -hmm. marketing and branding. The second step is sales. Sales is converting an ideal and likely lead or an ideal and likely buyer into an actual buyer. 
Um, and I believe that a lot of times, and I've worked with companies in the past that helped me with my marketing when I was first starting djconnection.com. And I would say, well, yeah, I, I'm getting a lot of leads, but I'm not selling anything. And they would say, uh, we don't really help with that. We just focus on the marketing or just the branding or just, I want to get your thoughts on the sales thing. Um, you do a very good job of tracking. Um, I won't share your tracking numbers on today's show, but you know, you do a very good job of tracking. This is how many leads that came in. This is how many people bought. How has that helped you measuring and tracking your sales? Um, number one, it helps me because as I've grown, I've got multiple salesmen that work with me. Number one, I'm able to see what my guys in the field are selling every week. And it also gives me uh, time and to see, or not time, but gives me the capabilities of looking and seeing how our ebbs and flows are in my business. Cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an outdoor service company. So in the springs and the falls, it's able to see when I need to gear up for employees, when I need to gear up and get guys ready for stuff, um, when our downtimes are. So, you know, over the last two years, I'm able to look, go back and look at going, Hey, you know, January and February is going to be real slow December. So I really need to start as a business owner in October you know, September and October start pushing sales and start finding different ways to be able to get more business to keep my guys going so we can book out over that time. So if I wasn't able to track my sales, my leads coming in, the um, jobs were sold, I wouldn't know, you know, you, you get so busy in your day in, day out, you don't focus on that stuff. And, you know, me meeting with you every week as a business coach and able to sit there and look at that stuff every week, you, you, you know, you get, trained to be able to look at that stuff and be able to see stuff ahead as you're growing your business and not looking in the rear of your mirror going, man, I wished I would have kept and kept that going or wished I would have known about that mm. six months ago. Cause then I would have been able to adjust then to help us now. And now I'm sitting there going, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to make money to pay bills and we got to get some jobs sold. And I'm working in the rear of your mirror trying to get stuff closed that we should have been working on three to four months ago. Now, most of the clients I work with, you know, I charge clients a flat rate of $1,700 a month plus a small percentage of growth. And the idea is uh, hopefully I'm the cheapest employee that you have. Um, you know, so <laughs> you look at it and you go, okay, I'm paying this guy $1,700 a month. Okay. Hopefully I'm the least expensive person on the payroll, the least expensive line item. But over time, once we produce fruit, hopefully that small percentage of growth, that small percentage of the, the growth, makes it all worth it, you know? And so that's the idea is to achieve that true win-win. And so the next, the third aspect of, of the business coaching I wanted to cover on today's uh, show is management. So you look at a great project like this, you got to do marketing, branding, true. Step two, you got to do sales, but three, you got to manage. And I think that most people who are self-employed feel sort of isolated and annoyed. I feel like most self-employed people feel isolated and annoyed. They feel like, am I the only one seeing the level of jackassery that is uh, uh, often allowed in the American workplace today. And I have to work with all my wonderful clients to teach best practice management systems. And I think you do a fi you fine job of that. That's something that you, in my opinion, is one of your strengths. Um, you do a very good job of communicating the expectations directly to the client and you manage those expectations. You tell the client, hey, Mr. Smith, hey, Ms. Smith, we're going to have your pool, your, 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 your pool remodel or your pool fix or your pool house fixed or your, your outdoor uh, uh, siding project, your outdoor landscaping. We're going to have your uh, retaining wall. We're going to have whatever the project is. We're going to have it done by this particular day. It's going to cost this amount of money. And you do a very good job of managing that relationship with the client and then managing those employees by the, behind the scenes. Can you talk to us about the importance of just mastering management techniques? Well, I don't know if anybody's ever a master. Um, what One of the things I've learned, you know, and I've had clients over and over in my field sit there and go, man, when you said you were there, you were there. Um, you were there every time you said you were going to be there. Um, and you did what you said you were going to do. And that, you know, number one, I like to be a man of my word. I mean, I like to be able to tell people when we're going to be there. You know, I, I work in the outdoor industry. I mean, it rains. We're in Oklahoma, so there's, you know, you're going to have delays. But setting those expectations with the clients, number one, helps me for, you know, to be able to go, hey, it's rain. I had just, I can't get it. Um, we, we're, we've been delayed because of this. And setting those expectations up front makes for a happy end product with your clients. Um, 
and just tell, you know, going through the process, say, Hey, right. Even when I sell the job, I'm like, Hey, we're the highest rated, most reviewed, you know, company in Tulsa right now. And here's the reason why, but that also comes with, we're really busy. Um, we're not going to be able to get to you tomorrow. And the thing is the people that can get to you tomorrow are probably not going to give you the best product. Um, and setting those expectations with the clients up front, letting them know, Hey, we're going to be a little behind. We're, you know, we're six weeks out, we're eight weeks out and letting that client know that and then keeping them up to date. Then the client knows, Hey, they just didn't take my deposit or they just didn't take this and just disappeared. They know that, Hey, we're coming down, you know, we're there, we're still there. We're going to get it done. So I, I think that's one of the things that's helping really to set that set with your clients and it makes it important to them at the end because they know, I mean, a lot, some of these jobs are an investment for the, you know, their backyard. It's a lot of money for them on some of these projects. And it's just like, you know, buying a house, you want to know that you're getting what you're paying for and it's going to be there when you expect it to be there. And we could share just hundreds of video testimonials or Google reviews. I'm just showing some examples here. Um, yeah. But again, the final the final area I wanted to cover on today's show, again, I'm just making sure we're recapping. Marketing and branding, that's how you generate leads. Second step is sales. You convert ideal and likely buyers into sales. Three is management. You have to manage the expectations. And then the final step is accounting and what I, what I would classify as merit-based pay. At the end of the day, it's not how much money you make, it's how much you keep. And I just don't think that most people think about that when they're growing a business. Um, and that's becoming an increasingly part of our ongoing conversations is making sure that, you know, because, A, you're the kind of guy that quotes a customer a price and you hold yourself accountable to not changing your bid on the client. But that doesn't mean that subcontractors or employees won't try to change the game on you and all of a sudden <laughs> drive up your expenses. So can you talk about that, that final step of just – the accountings. I think a lot of entrepreneurs, when they look out for them, when they reach out for a business coach or a consultant, they don't think about the accounting. But I would argue, as we continue to grow outside Inc., the accounting aspect of your business is becoming a bigger part. I, I firmly agree. We're, I just actually just come out of a meeting talking about accounting and bills and what's coming in, uh, fresh on my mind, you know. And as you grow your business, um, one of the things I think as you're young, you're just trying to get jobs done. You're just trying to get whatever you can go. But as you grow, it becomes a huge part. It becomes, I think, more than what most people think it's going to be. Um, and getting, you know, keeping the money and keeping the accounting. Um, it's just like this last year, Clay, me and you had been talking about, you know, doing merit base. Because I think once, if you get, if you pay people enough where they're comfortable, they stay there. They don't want to grow. And, you know, as your business grows, you want to grow. You want to give them more money. You know, every, most most people want more money. I think everybody would, you know, not frown against getting, getting some extra money. But as a business owner, you want your salesmen, you want your guys out there in the field wanting to be able to make more money. And if you just keep them on an hourly basis, there's no growth for them to perform better and to make more money. So it, this last year, I've switched my sales guys to 100% commission. I used to have them up a base and I put them over to commission. And the amount of calls of clients looking for their bids has got cut down in over half. Um, he's selling more jobs by, I would say, 30 to 40 percent, maybe even more than that uh, since we've been tracking it. And it's it's made a huge, huge thing um, because the thing is, if he doesn't sell, he doesn't get paid any money. And so, you know, especially when you find people that are eager to make more money, they're going to sell more. You know, this is one thing I wanted to bring uh, bring up, and I'll let you go here because I know you're a busy guy here. Uh, for anybody out there that doesn't know this, you know, when I built my first company called DJConnection.com, after every event we did, I was obsessive about calling the bride after the wedding and asking them to leave us an objective review. Now, this is before Google was super relevant, so we had WeddingWire and the Not.com and those kind of things, or we would get video testimonials on an old-school video camera we had back in the day. We would archive them, and at a certain point, I remember I talked to a bride, and she said to me, you have thousands of video testimonials. And I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. And then now today, people go to thrivetimeshow.com. They click on testimonials. And I had a, a call I had the other just the other day with a wonderful man. And he was saying to me, I was going through your testimonials. And I had to stop around like page 30 because I kept looking at the testimonials. And I realized there is really no end in sight. I mean, I'm looking at this and there's like, years after years after years of video testimonials 
And I said, well, yeah, because we document that. That's a very important thing that we do. Um, but I want to ask you this question. For anybody out there that's thinking about coming to one of our workshops or scheduling a free 13-point assessment with myself uh, to go over how to grow their company, what would you say or maybe what kind of impact do you think that business uh, coaching uh, with our program has made on your business? Uh, it's been huge. Um, one of the things I've loved, you know, the problem is a lot of times with business owners is they're – I feel, especially with me, you know, we come from, for my instance, I come from, I call it W2 employee status, you know, working for somebody and said, hey, I'm going to go out here and start my own business. Well, I didn't go to business school. Nobody's told me the next steps, what what I really need to focus on, because um, as you grow this business, like, what is it? There, You know, you can read a thousand books. And what's made it huge for me is to be able to come along, you know, have you come along beside me and something go, hey, you need to focus on this and this is why you need to focus on this and this is why, because when we get, when we get down in what I call the trenches as a business owner, you're sitting there going, man, if you, all you do is focus on that, you can never focus on what you really need to do. You can't focus on your accounting and stuff like that. And it's been amazing. Um, it's actually, I don't know how much it's grown my company so far in the last two years, but it is the peace of mind is unreal because I'm not looking at my uh, numbers at the moment but um it has been huge it's just like I used to have to pay I think it was I think we were paying in the neighborhood of four thousand dollars a month just for leads hmm. just to get leads in now um two years ago I mean this time of the year we're yeah I mean I remember some bills of forty five hundred dollars a month just to get leads that I was having to pay for and hmm. that's only get a lead and a contact to where now I'm paying you $1,700 a month and I got 80 some leads last week alone and I paid you $1,700. And to me, that was, that was huge for my industry. Um, that was one huge thing that just blown me away. And I'll, I'll say this too. Um, you are a client that's more private about your numbers. That just goes with your personality type. I have some of my clients are a little bit more flashy. They love to talk about their gross <laughs> sales and their sales, but I can say this. I was looking at year over year. So you take the month of May, when we're recording this and you look at the, this week, last year, and last week you had eight leads. So last year, this week, you had eight leads from what I can tell on the tracking sheet. And this week we had 89. So whatever that's worth for anybody out there. And again, uh, you know, we have some of our clients that like to talk about gross sales and we, and Paul keeps it more private and that's totally fine. So I just encourage everybody out there. You can have a tenfold increase in your number of leads, your amount of activity. You can do it, but you got to be a diligent doer. You can't just be a hearer of these words. You have to implement what you're learning. And Paul, I really appreciate you uh, for making the uh, uh, Thrive Time Show World Headquarters look incredible. Thank you for the maintenance you provide. Thank you for the work you provide. And again, it's, it's been awesome serving you. So again, thanks for your time today, sir. Hey, thank you, Clay. Have a great day, bud. Take care. Bye. All right, bye. I'm Glenn Shaw, uh, owner of Shaw Homes in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Started the company in 1985. Uh, at that time, it was one employee doing everything. Me. I met Aaron Antis in 2007. The top three things that Aaron did for Shaw Homes was he brought in processes that helped us be able to repeat uh, over and over. Uh, he brought in unique hiring skills. He was able to find the right people for the right seat on the bus. And Aaron brought uh, sales techniques that we weren't familiar with up until that time. When Aaron came, uh, we were selling about 80, 85 houses a year. And during the 16 year period, we saw sales get up over 400. And before I met Aaron, the only sales manager we had was myself. And I was completely uh, unable to perform that job. And so uh, Aaron brought major changes and great results with them. In the many years that I was building houses before Aaron, I was great at selling if somebody wanted to buy, but they had to be knocking on my door asking me to sell them a house before I could uh, actually make that sell. I had no sales techniques and no ability to, uh, to generate sales. Aaron coming in as a natural salesperson just absolutely transformed that and uh, made the sales experience better for the company and better for our buyers. 
uh, prior to Aaron, I would work uh, all week uh, for the company. I'd sit in the model home over the weekend, and uh, I had a salesperson or two, but I was out, actually out there uh, all weekend working that. Since hiring Aaron, I was able to take my weekends off, uh, even reduce my workload during the week. I went from working 60, 70 hours a week to almost a normal workload. So I've been a member of the Builder 20 program in the National Association of Home Builders for uh, 25 years, 20 years. And during that time, I've seen a lot of sales managers uh, with the other companies that have been involved. And in my opinion, Aaron is smarter and sharper than any sales manager of any builder that's ever been in our group. Now, some markets, they don't have to try to sell. They just sell themselves. But with the ability to sell and to train and hire, Aaron was better than any of those sales managers that uh, were in my program. Well, I remember when I considered hiring Aaron many years ago, the thought of spending the extra money was a little scary. But in hindsight, it was one of the best things I've ever done. Uh, it freed my time, increased our sales, and at the end of the day, increased our profitability uh, beyond my wildest expectations. Uh, years ago, I was concerned that if I didn't do whatever a customer, customer asked me to do, it might be the last house I sold. And so uh, over time, we were able to move away from unlimited customization to pre-designed options. The problem that we were having in those days is that the customer would tell us what they wanted, but they didn't really know what they wanted. And we would deliver exactly what they told us to do, and they wouldn't be happy with it. So as we became more standardized, we give lots of options, but we don't customize. And in the end, that allows us to sell more homes for better margins than spending countless hours trying to customize in uh, just every avenue of, of the sales process. Uh, it, we, we get weekly reports on sales, on profitability, on production, and uh, it provides all the manageable tools that I need to review the company from a 10,000 foot level. All right, Thrive Nation, on today's show, we're going to focus on is how to grow a successful company. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a graphic um, that is the the theory of how to grow a successful company, but vision without execution is hallucination. And so if you go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire, you can download a, a book that I have written called A Millionaire's Guide, How to Become Sustainably Rich. You can download it for free at thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire, but you have to actually implement that which is in the book. And so on today's show, we're joined by a, a very successful a person in the home building business, a, a great friend of mine, a man by the name of Aaron Antis. Aaron Antis, welcome on to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Clay. Thanks for having me on. Hey, so I got to ask you this for the people out there that uh, want to prove you're not a hologram. Uh, first off, what's the uh, website for your company so people can verify that you are, in fact, a, a real business? You bet. It's shawhomes.com. S-H-A-W-H-O-M-E-S.com. Shawhomes.com. I'm pulling it up. Shawhomes.com. Pulling it up. That's the website, shawhomes.com. Yep. And uh, when you and I met before, before we met, you had been already very successful as a home builder. Um, you turned your, your dream of being a home builder guy into reality. Yeah. Um, and uh, so how many homes had you sold or what kind of sales had you done in your career as a home builder guy before you and I even met? Uh, before we met, uh, probably about 750 million in sales prior to meeting you. And then um, you did the, the year we first started working together. What were the sales totals that year? Uh, we were at like 19 million, 19 million. And then when yeah. you ended 2022, uh, obviously we're in 2023. And so we'll see how this year ends. But as far as ending 2022, how much sales did you do last year at the end of 2022? Uh, 2022, we were at like 84 million. Okay. So from 19 million to 84 million, 84 million. So you're doing some things right here. And what we're going to try to do is, is kind of demystify the plan here. Okay. So here we go. So, um, establishing revenue goals. Yep. Um, when you and I first started working together, we started off with a 13 point assessment. We, we went over um, your goals. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you to share your goals on the air, but why is it important that you have goals? 
Well, I mean, goals are sort of your guideposts that, you know, you, you set something out there in front of you and you start chasing after it. And without that, you're just kind of floundering in mediocrity. You don't have any reason to get up in the morning and really get after it. And so, you know, I, I think goals are, you know, it's, you can have lots of different types of goals. And we've talked about a yeah. lot of this. We've talked about, you know, having financial goals and having, you know, fitness goals and having friendship goals and just all these different areas. I know you've got the F6, you know, so um, that's kind of something that, you know, we, we touched on very early on. You asked me like, is the goal, is one of your goals more income or is it more time? Mm. And so I said, well, really at this point, it's more income and then later it became more time. So, you know, it's changed over the time I've known you since 2016, we're going on seven years and the income went up considerably. So now it's, you know, turned in the last couple of years towards more time. Now the break even numbers, again, I'm not asking you for the numbers on the show, but you guys have a lot of fixed costs. I mean, if you go to shawhomes.com, you've got uh, framers, you have plumbers, you have uh, tile people, you have so many skilled people, you have a full-time sales team, yeah. you have an admin staff. And if you don't land. sell yeah. a house, you still have the service of the land. You still have all the overhead. Why is it important for every listener out there to know their break even point, how many deals they need per month just to break even? Well, yeah, because you're going backwards real quick and it doesn't take very long. If you're at the beginning of your business, it doesn't take very long for you to be in a place where, you know, the creditors are knocking at your door and you're, uh, you know, you can't pay your bills. And all of a sudden you're going to lose all your, your, for us, all of our trades, all of our suppliers are going to start backing out. So, you know, you've got to know what that number is that lets you tread water so that, you know, okay, this is the worst case scenario, everything above that, at least I'm into the profit zone. So, you know, you go out of business pretty quick. Uh, most businesses don't last more than just a few months if they get below that break even number. So now folks, again, these might seem like simple steps, but they're all the linear steps you have to take to create time freedom and financial freedom. And if you want to grow your company, this is how you do it. Box number three, though, is you have to know the hours you're willing to work. Now, your credible wife is, is here off camera for uh, accountability. So at any point, you know, she could yell like, hey, man, or boo. Uh, <laughs> but you guys are on the same page with the hours you're willing to work. And you guys, as a couple, I want to brag on both of you. You guys both committed to sacrificing time and energy and a lot of things to get to where you're at in life. Yeah. And then as you had your children, you raised them, you decided to vote to devote time to raising said kids. Yeah. And now that your kids are older, you're devoting time to raising these kids. So it's not like you uh, advocated being a parent while also growing a company. You did both well. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to get your thoughts on sitting down with your spouse if you're watching this today or your significant other and making sure you're on the same page about how many hours per week you're willing to work. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't want to grow a business to, you know, make a whole bunch of money just so you can split it in half later. Oh, because that's kind of what happens kind of when you don't work out those details ahead of time. And so my wife and I have been married 25 years. We've been together for four before that. And uh, so, yeah, 20, sorry, 26. Did I just say 25? 26, but real quick, just yeah. like, I hate to do this to I you. I just got in trouble. I hate to okay. your, your wife just turned 27 on Thursday, and what you said is 100% false. Okay, so the unique value proposition here. Now, yeah. let's talk about this. Um, whether it's, um, you know, growing a home building company or a dog training business or a haircut chain or a carpet cleaning franchise or whatever business we're involved in helping to grow, yeah. you have to sit down as a listener out there, as a business owner, you got to figure out what makes your company unique. Absolutely. So I want to ask you, what makes Shaw Homes unique in the marketplace with other home builders? Yeah, we have more furnished and decorated model homes than any other builder in the market. So, you know, a lot of times people, when they walk into a home and they're trying to decide if they like the floor plan, the layout, whatever, they usually, most builders in our market have an empty house that they walk into. There's, it's just kind of echoes when you walk through it. There's no furniture or anything. And we completely, as you can see in this little video here, we completely furnish and decorate it, um, make it beautiful. We are the most award-winning builder in the state of Oklahoma. We've That's true. Won, we've won like five times as many awards as any other builder in the market. So definitely that is one of our big, you know, you know, takeaways. And I'm going to throw you under the bus real quick. And I don't mean to do this uh, uh, super passively aggressively. It'll just be more of a subtle passive aggressive. When I met you, you guys had all these awards, but no one knew. That's true. It was like this weird, bizarre thing where you had all these awards. I remember talking to you and I'm like, what makes you guys different? And you're like, you know, we do a good job and you're, you're being nice about it. You're a good salesperson. But I said, well, I mean, tell me about the awards. And you're like, well, we got this award. 
that award. This is true. This award, like 45 minutes later, it's like that award, this award. I need to shave now. This award, yeah, that award. That I need to go lot. brush my teeth. This award, mm -hmm. that award. I want to go mow the lawn now. This award, that award. I'm thinking about retiring. This award, that my kids are turning 18. I can see it. This award, you're just going, and this award, and that award. Yeah. And so we put those on the website, and that helped. Mm -hmm. And the other thing you guys were, we needed to change was all these people were saying great things, but we didn't have video reviews of them saying it on camera. Right. So it was like yeah. your online reputation didn't match your real world reputation. It's so much good momentum there. And so many people loved you guys. And now you guys have, would you say a hundred video reviews? Oh gosh. I would say more than that. We've got, yeah, we have a lot. <laughs> and every week uh, you, you can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I was scrolling. And this is actually all that's on this page. If you, if you go to our YouTube channel, we have way more than this. So, yeah. So again, and this is all the stuff you're going to grow a successful company folks. Step one, you got to figure out your revenue goals. Step two, you got to figure out your break even goal. Step three, sit down for an hour and a power, sit down with your spouse, make sure that you guys are on the same page of your hours. You're willing to work. Step four, unique value proposition, figure out what it is that makes you unique. And we have an in depth guide that you can download for free at thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire if you get stuck. Next box, you got to improve your branding, your okay. website, your one sheet, in your case, model home presentations, business cards, social media branding, everything that a customer sees needs to be first class. And I was talking to a guy named uh, Ronnie Morales today, and it's Morales Brothers. I think you met him at a conference. Mm -hmm. He told me this, and I'm not slamming Ronnie. Ronnie, if you're listening, I'm not slamming you. This is the real thing. Ronnie said he'd listened to our show for seven consecutive years before ever reaching out. <laughs> and now he's reached out and he's up 57% in about eight months. That's awesome. And we're going to put his story on part two of today's show because he's in Texas cool. and uh, he's seven years behind you, Yeah, but he's doing a great job. Um, wh what do you think that thing is where people have bad branding and, and they, and they, and they are not, is it, we're not aware of it. Is it someone hasn't brought it to our attention? What, what causes bad branding? You know, the number one thing I hear business owners say is, well, you know, I don't really need good branding because I sell everything by word of mouth. Oh yeah. Baby. Like, I've got such an incredible reputation. You do. That everybody just comes to me by word of mouth. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, yeah. But how much business did you do last year? Well, not very much. And you know, I'm, I'm really unprofitable, but, but I, I've got great, you know, reputation out there and I get a lot of word of mouth. So when people switch over to starting to improve branding, I know you helped us a lot with that in just creating a lot better looking website, creating mm -hmm. a, um, you know, we've got an office environment now that is um, when people walk into our model home, they are blown away. We truly wow our customers when they come to our model homes. Yep, uh, It's a one of a kind experience in the state of Oklahoma. And the process of that, you know, just going through branding it so that it looks really top notch. And, you know, that includes everything from, you know, marketing to all of your senses and everything else. So it just really um, brought us to another level. And when the customer comes in and experiences us after having walked through other builders homes, they usually come in and go, you guys are just on a whole nother level. It sights, sounds, smells, experiences, everything that your customer sees, they're grading you on. And you might not know that they are even judging you because they're not filling out the form. And I have a funny story to share with you that's kind of sad. Hmm. I was working with a fitness guy years ago, and I'm not going to tell you what study he's in or what study folks. But I know you want to know, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> and we, he, said, he filled out the form because his wife wanted him to schedule a 13-point assessment. Mm -hmm. He did not want to. Yep. And he tells me. Clay, honestly, I'm just doing the call because my wife wants me on the phone. I got to, I don't really don't get leads from social media. I don't get leads from marketing. I get all my leads word of mouth, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let me just do this. Let's just, um, this first month working together, let me get all the passwords for your Facebook, your Google, your YouTube. And I'm just, as the first month, we, we do this with, with, with every single client. Yeah. We optimize your YouTube, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, your, you know, all that. Yep. We log on. This is a fitness guy. Mm -hmm. He was spending like 400 bucks a week every week on ads. Yeah. And he hadn't known, he wasn't aware that every time a lead came in, it got stuck in Facebook and went to an email address that he wasn't checking. <laughs> Whoa. So think about this. That's not good. And it's like 15 to 20 leads a week for years, this mm -hmm. guy had. Mm, that's not good. And he, he didn't even, and so I'm going, uh, you're spending, you know, 20 grand a year on ads that you're not getting, getting anything. anything from. Um, and are you aware that the phone number on your site rings to a phone that's no longer real, a, a real phone? 
<laughs> and I'm serious. This was real. Uh, and then he had before and after great. photos where somebody had had the idea of let's get before and after photos, mm -hmm. you know, where you interview someone before they start working out. Yeah. But then they never completed the thought. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? I do. Where yeah. it's like they interview him about getting in shape. Yeah. But then they never actually like aired the part where they're in shape. Oh, no. So it's just sort of like an interview with people that are not in shape. And I'm like, I, I and again, he's busy guy, busy entrepreneur. That kind of stuff is very common. It's it's kind of laughable if it's not your oh, company. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, OK, next box. You got to determine your, your your customer acquisition costs. How much does it cost you? to get a customer. So Aaron, you guys run ads on, on Google, on Facebook, on retargeting ads. You have massive signage. There's a lot of stuff you do. Yep. Why is it important to know how much it costs you at the end of the day to get an actual new buyer of a Shaw home? Well, because if you want more of those, you know what it costs to go generate more of those. Mm. And it's, you know, it's a cost where it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm down in sales this month or this quarter or whatever, and I need four more sales to make it a good quarter here before the end of the quarter. And it's like, I know I can go put money into that and it's going to cost me X number of dollars per customer to get there. And so then it's just a matter of, do I want to spend that money to get to that point? So, you know, for us, it's, you know, a pretty high number because it's a lot, it's a big ticket item, but for some people it might be, you know, very small to get that, you know, each customer, but for us, you know, it's, um, you got to know what the number is because ultimately that goes into the price of your product and whatever you sell, you know, we're doing homes. That is one of our line item costs in our homes. That's a cost. Yeah. Now, uh, if you go to uh, any of the businesses that I'm involved in, you go to EITRLounge.com forward slash staff. I put in the password here. Once I put in the password, I have all of the documents needed to run the company and they're all saved. So the checklist for the manager, the opening checklist for the assistant manager, the bathroom cleaning checklist, everything needed to grow the companies all in one place. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, it, the business, everybody who works there knows where to go to find those documents. This is the kind of stuff that fires me up and it makes other people crazy. Oh, yeah. So with the conferences we do, if we ever do a conference that's out of town, I have a checklist of stuff I print out. I know it seems kind of crazy for people. But this is real. I print it out and it's like, okay, socks. If I'm gone for four days. I want to have 12 pairs of socks. Why? Because it could be hot. I don't know. Could mm -hmm. get wet. I don't know. Yeah. I have a list of you know deodorant and socks and shaving, and I have a laptop and a backup laptop, and I have patch cables and XLR cables, and yep. we bring mo three. You, you've seen all this stuff, but it's multiple yeah. monitors, backup monitors. It's backups for everything. When you guys build a Shaw home, you're not moving off of guesswork. There's blueprints, there's plans, there's systems. So houses don't fall down. There's somebody out here listening right now that doesn't have systems in place. They don't have mm -hmm. checklists. Oh, yeah. They don't have it. And so they have to have the, they have to think about everything all the time because if not, they forget a step. Yeah. What would you say is the importance of having taken oh, the time to have built these systems now? It is the night and day difference between running around like your hair is on fire every day, constantly playing firefighter, or, you know, you hear people say, oh, I'm up to my armpits and alligators, you know, hmm. it's because you don't have systems and processes. And every time at Shaw Homes, every time that we have a problem come up, we automatically go, okay, what step in our system did this fall apart in? Yep. And what's broken in that step and how can we fix it so it never happens again? So we go fix the process. You know, we address the problem for the customer, but then we go back after that and we go, how do we fix the process so we don't repeat this problem? And the, the business owners that are running around with their hair on fire all the time, it's because there's no systems, no processes. Everything is urgent. Everything is hair on fire. Correct. And it is a, it is a chaos world that you live in. And if you're going to build homes for a living and build a lot of them, you cannot live in that chaos world. Now, this next box, I get I get excited about all these boxes. This is what I get excited about. This this right here is what I care about. Okay, oh, yeah. the next box is box is management and execution. Mm -hmm. Um, you have people on your team, and I'm just going to give some examples. And I hope this benefits somebody out there listening. You have people on your team; it's their responsibility. Every time that you do a, a new house, mm -hmm. they go out there and they design or they get the blueprint on the website. Yeah, they get the 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 new. Uh, a design of the home because people want to see floor plans. Yep. So somebody's job is to get those up there. Yes. Somebody gets photos of every house that you guys are building. Yeah. Somebody gets videos of every house. Somebody puts them all up for sale. Somebody answers the phone every day. Yes. Somebody calls the leads every day. Every day. Somebody cleans the bathroom every day. Somebody builds the houses every day. Now, this is what I find, and I'm sure none of our listeners can relate to this. Some of our listeners fire people and then 
nothing happens. <laughs> so work with me on this. There's listeners out there that I talk to them every day because we do free 13 point assessments. So I talk to two or three people a day who go to thrivetimeshow.com. They want to schedule a consultation. And the other day you heard me talking to Jordan. I said, Jordan, go ahead and keep setting those. He set an appointment with someone who's definitely not a good fit. Yep. And you could tell he was had a little, you know, question if that was okay. And I said, I would rather you set an appointment with somebody than not, because I don't know if who's a good fit or not, you know? Yeah. But the idea though, is I, I sit down, I was talking to a guy the other day and he was like, uh, you know, the reason why my team did not get Google reviews or videos that reviews this week is because we fired a guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I go, cause I'm just asking him, you know, where are we stuck? What's your biggest limiting factor? I have a big process. I go through my evaluation. Yep. And I said, who calls the leads? He's like, well, normally I have a person that calls the leads, but we just fired her. <laughs> and, and, and I mean this, stuff. I'm going, how long have you been in business? This guy's been in business for over 10 years mm -hmm. and he's reaching out for help. Good person. We're trying to help him. I think it's going to be a good fit. Mm -hmm. But so I said, so basically everybody follows the systems until they don't work there anymore. And then no one does the systems. And you go back and forth vacillating from things being done to not being done. Uh -huh. And one of my favorite things about working with you guys is that you're honest people. What does that mean? You do your best to, to do what you say you're going to do. Uh -huh. And you, you hold yourself and the employees accountable. Absolutely. But what would happen if every week you, uh, if somebody wasn't performing, you remove them from the position and then the houses weren't built for the week because something wasn't going well, or uh -huh. because maybe a salesperson wasn't performing at the peak, you let them go. And the next thing you know, what, what would happen if you managed your company that way? Uh, it would be a disaster. I mean, I can't not have, I can't just fire my superintendent without having somebody already ready to take over all of those responsibilities because I've got materials showing up at the job site today, tomorrow, and the next day. I've got trades showing up who need some supervision, need to know what they're supposed to be doing. If I fire that guy with no warning, somebody else has to come fill in that position. So, you know, for us, we try to never have that gap happen. And, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, that you're going to need to fire somebody and you can see the writing on the wall, right? but you want to get the next person up and ready to go before that happens. And you guys have a weekly meeting. So we talk a lot on the show from an employer perspective, but what would, how frustrating would it be to be an A player employee and you're working for a C player boss? Uh, you know, a boss that doesn't have a staff meeting, that's not organized, that doesn't pay people on time, that's constantly emotional. I see that a lot. And so management is a learned skill. Yes, and is. thankfully, you know, when I first uh, met with you, you'd already really mastered, in my opinion, managing people. But this yeah. next box is where we I thought we needed some help was to build a system for constantly recruiting new people because certain people yes. work for Shaw Homes for three years or four years, and then they want to go move. They want to have a baby. They want to stay home. They want to get a new job. Yeah. And even though you have low turnover at Shaw, certain people get to their expiration date, and it's time yeah. for them to move on to something else. Yep. And because we didn't have a process in place at Shaw at that time to consistently bring in a pipeline of new people, uh, it made it difficult to do the management that was needed. Can you talk Absolutely. about the importance of implementing a, a human resources program for hiring, inspiring, training, and retaining good people? It's huge. I mean, that was definitely an Achilles heel for us. Um, and you helped, you helped us a lot with that. Um, you know, putting in a, you know, where every single week I'm seeing, you know, potential candidates that could come work for us and their job shadowing and seeing what it's like to work in our company every single week. Yep. It, it does multiple things. It helps the people who work there to know, hey, there's other people who desire to come work here. There we go. And, you know, if I'm not doing my job, I might get replaced. So there's a little bit of that. And then it's also a thing of, you know, the people who are shadowing get to see the job being done by people who are happy doing their job. And it helps them to want to come be a part of Shaw Homes. I've got a very long list of people right now in every single position that would be excited to come work for us if i did all of a sudden find myself with an opening you know because occasionally people leave with no notice or whatever you know something happens family emergency whatever right and you have that oh i need to replace somebody immediately and the great thing about it is i have a whole bunch of people that i could plug into that position very quickly because every single week i am interviewing 
Now, uh, the next box here is you got to do your accounting. And to, in order to automate, in order to earn millions, you have to automate your accounting. What does that mean? You have to have a system in place for making sure you price your products and services correctly and that you pay yourself first, that you set aside a set amount of money to pay yourself and your staff. And with it, all these things work together. And what I find is people ask me, often just not knowing, they come from a place of a good heart. They don't know. They say to me, Clay, what is the most important step? in growing Shaw Homes. I've, I've heard Aaron on the show. He's a great guy. Clay, I've heard PMH OKC on the show. Clay, I've seen OxyFresh on the show. What was the most important thing they did? And to me, that's like asking a hiker, what was the most important step you took to get to the top of that mountain? Mm -hmm. Well, it was the one we took there an hour ago. Uh, I, I took a left step. No, it's a, so, or it's like asking a baker, what's the most important ingredient? Is it milk? Is it sugar? Is it eggs? Is it, you know, it's like asking a farmer, what's the most important thing, feeding the animals or watering them? What's the key to your success? There's just certain questions that I understand people want to know, sure. but all of this has to work together and nothing Absolutely. works unless you do. So I have three final questions for you. Mm -hmm. For anybody out there that's thinking about um, scheduling a consultation, a free consultation with uh, thrivetimeshow.com and myself. Obviously, they're stuck with me if they fill out the form. I'm the only person that does 13-point mm -hmm. assessments. Right. Um, I believe we, I've, I've seen it since 2005. We help people decrease their costs, increase their time, freedom, and profits. What would you say is the benefit of scheduling that 13 point assessment? Well, actually, the 13 point assessment was very eye opening for me. You asked me a lot of tough questions that I probably should have been asking myself and wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so as we went through the questions, I was like, I think at every question you asked me, I was like, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> and I was like, hang on, let me think about that for a minute. Yeah. So I find that it kind of helps open your eyes to, you know, mm, these are some things that I know I have some areas of weakness. And then there were, I think, a couple of the questions where I was like, oh, I know the answer to this one. I got this one. No problem. But it helps you sort of identify. I, I walked away having identified areas of strength and areas of weakness, even though that really wasn't the purpose of the phone call necessarily. It helped me to see that. And then I was like, hmm, I think I have a need in a couple of these areas. And I didn't really know what to do for my for myself. I didn't have the answers. You know, in part three of today's show, part two, we're going to show the Ronnie Morales story. On part three, we're going to do an, a, a, a testimony with uh, Myron. And Myron just bought his first Lamborghini today, and he's yeah, super he fired did. up. And so Myron's about uh, six years down the path. We've been working with you for about eight years, whereas Ronnie's been with us for less than a year. And it's at a certain point that we have to take action. Knowledge without application is meaningless. What would you say to somebody who's like, you know, it's $1,700 a month and, you know, I'm spending that much right now on random ads and that much money on uh, random regrettable purchases at the gas station. And, you know, a lot of <laughs> iTunes I'm downloading. I'm spending $1,700 a month on various things. Mm. And I don't know if I can afford it because I've just bought another vehicle that I can't afford, but I'm leasing it. You know, what would you say to anybody who's kind of on that fence? Uh, I mean, I would say you need to do it. I mean, it has made a, it has been a game changer for us. I don't know why you would sit there and think $1,700 a month is too much money to spend. Go find the money somewhere, go empty out your sofa cushions, go sell the stuff that you have in your house that you're not using. I mean, go get, you know, whatever you need to do to get to that place, you need to find that $1,700. And I will say this, that cost was very quickly replaced with the extra money we were making. And I've seen, I've actually seen, cause I've been around you for a long time. I've seen a lot of your clients come in and right off the bat, they're real nervous about, am I going to be able to, you know, cause maybe they're a smaller company or whatever. Right. And they're like, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to handle this 1700 a month. And then I see them six months later and I'm like, how's it going now? And they're like, Man, we're just hitting record after record. I have referred several business owners and to they're you doing great that are killing it. And that, you know, I, I'll give one example. I won't name the person, but I did send one of my very good friends to you who was on the verge of losing his business because he just wasn't able. He had bought another one of the shops of what he does. Yep. He opened it and it was not profitable and it was going to take under both of his shops. And I sent him over to you. And I remember about three months later, I asked him, how's it going? And he goes, man, we just had a record-breaking month. This was amazing. 
And, and by the that, way, said person just hit another record breaking month, just so you know. Yeah. And I know right now, not only does he have way more income, but he has a lot more time freedom because he's been working with you for many years now. And so that was, it, it changed his life just like it changed my life. I would say if you're thinking about, you know, doing a 13 point assessment, stop thinking, dial the phones to pause this video, make the phone call, reach out to Clay Get it started right now. Now, final question I have is, I think people look at oxyfresh.com and they go, man, there's 500 locations now. Yeah. You know, they look at Elephant in the Room and they go, there's five brick and mortar locations now. They look at Shaw Homes and they go, you know, this these are big success stories. Yeah. I don't know that I can do it. What would you say to somebody out there that just feel like they might not have the, like all this stuff they're going to learn is going to be over their head, too complicated. What would you say? I would say the information, the ideas are easy. It's the application that is difficult for people. The ideas that you share, there's nothing that's like, oh my God, I don't have a PhD, therefore I can't do it. Mm. I feel like it's all very, very simple stuff, but it is a lot of action to get traction and you got to get the action going. And I think if somebody has diligence and discipline or can learn diligence or discipline, they're going to do extremely well. And it's not about education. It's about action. Mm -hmm. Now, Aaron, I got one thing I want to say, and then I'll let, we'll kind of wrap up today's show. Okay. With yep. a boom, because boom stands for big, overwhelming, optimistic momentum. And that's what's required to have success. Um, you know, people watching this, they're going, well, Aaron, you know, he looks like a normal guy. Well, that's, that's true. Uh, they say, well, he sounds like a normal guy. It sounds like an all right guy. You know, that's true. But the one thing you can't put quite picture on the show, and I, I want to just give that gift to you folks who are watching is Aaron smells tremendous. <laughs> It's like a, it's a, it's like a, if you had smell a vision, if you could just get up there and just smell that, thing, it's, it's incredible. And it's really, it's, it's his aroma that allows him to achieve massive success. So unless it's, so it if you're out secret. there and you're going, what's the secret sauce, it's not a sauce. It's more of just a smell. So uh, I don't know if you qualify to have the kind of success he has, unless you Probably. smell like he smells. It's, it's a point. really tremendous smell. Okay. Let's end this thing with a boom. Here we go. Three, two, one, boom. boom. Well, Thrive Nation, we have an opportunity all the time. We 